Hi Chills and few expats, welcome back. And if you're new to our channel, thank you for joining us. My name is Alonzo. Following the pandemic, many countries decided to give their economy a boost by implementing digital nomad visas, and Panama was definitely one of them. We're gonna tell you all about Panama's program in this video. So let me start off by saying for those who don't know, a digital nomad is someone who can do their job remotely. Basically, whether they work for a company or whether they work for themselves, they can do basically all of their work via the computer or via the phone. And so Panama, along with 43 other countries, have implemented digital nomad programs recently to try to give their economy a boost. They want to get people who are earning money into their country. Those people are going to be renting properties, possibly buying properties down the road, spending money, buying products. So they're all trying to attract these digital nomads. Um, some of the benefits to Panama's program is that it's basically very inexpensive. It only costs about $250 to apply for the visa and $50 for the card, for basically your visa card once the process is complete. Plus whatever money that your immigration lawyer is going to charge you. You are going to have to get this process done through an immigration lawyer. So the second benefit to Panama's visa is that it is renewable. Not all of these other visas are um, in other countries, but Panama's visa is renewable. It's nine months. You can renew it for another nine months. So that's another advantage there. One other benefit to doing this in Panama, as opposed to some other countries, is that Panama is a territorial tax system. And we pointed that out to you in the how to get a work permit in Panama video that Panama basically does not charge you tax for any monies that are earned outside of Panama. So if you're earning this money online, Panama is not going to charge you for that. Now, one thing that you can do after six months is that you can apply to become uh, taxable in Panama. That's going to be helpful for some people, not if you're from the U.S., because regardless of where you live, you're going to have to pay taxes in the U.S. But for people for some, from some countries, if you live outside of the country for X amount of time, you can then start to pay taxes in the country in which you live. And Panama's system is very friendly when it comes to payments. I think their max uh, is like 25% if you make over $50,000 a year. So that's another big advantage there. The other advantage to doing this in Panama, as opposed to some other places, particularly in the Caribbean, is that Panama's internet is very, very good. It's very strong. You have 147 multinational companies here in Panama, as we pointed out to you in our how to get a job in Panama video. Um, so Panama is basically a big business hub, the biggest hub in Central America. And <clears throat> many companies have decided to come here. And it's a big hub, of course, for shipping and for travel. So those are some of the benefits of, of doing the visa in, in Panama as opposed to some other countries. We do have some exclusive content coming up with more details on how to obtain these visas and the advantages and disadvantages um, of some other countries versus Panama. So with that, the requirements for this visa, first and foremost, as with all visas, you are going to have to get a copy of your FBI report, or if you're from Canada or another country, your police report. Um, you do have to have that apostled. Um, and also you can, you can go through the Panamanian consulate, um, <clears throat> to get that certified, which we recommend over, um, getting it apostled because, our experience anyway with the U.S. State Department, it was a very slow process. They'll claim, okay, it's COVID, things are slow, um, but it was more expensive and it was very slow. We had some documents that we had to get done toward the end and we decided to go through the consulate and it was a much, much easier process. So that's what we would recommend. But one other requirement is that you're going to have to prove that you have the funds to return to your home country when your visa expires. Also, you're going to have to get medical insurance that is viable in Panama. So even if you work for a company now and you have health insurance, that insurance may or may not cover you when out of the country. So that's something you have to discuss with your company, um, which, you know, so you may end up having to get your own. If you're self-employed, you're definitely going to have to look into getting your own health insurance that is good in Panama. The other thing that you're going to have to do is submit an affidavit of non-acceptance of any jobs in Panama. Because um, Panama basically wants to protect the jobs from their citizens. They don't want like overqualified uh, foreigners coming in here and taking up these jobs. Uh, we did point that out also in the how to get a job in Panama video that Panama 
has about 25 jobs, 25 different careers that are exclusive to Panamanians that they don't want foreigners working in. But companies can hire still up to 10% foreigners. So there's a possibility that you could get a job and the government is basically trying to prevent that by making you sign this affidavit saying that no, you're not going to be here searching for a job so that they can keep that for their citizens. The other thing that you're gonna to have to show is your proof of annual income. So Panama wants to see that you can support yourself here. And so the number that they come up with is $36,000 a year or $3,000 a month. So you're gonna to have to show documentation that you have that much coming in. I mean, of course you can do this via um, you know, bank statements, pay stubs. If you have your own business and you have a shop, say on Amazon as we do, you can get documentation from them um, that will show this. So if you are working for a company, some of the requirements specific to that is that you're gonna to have to have the legal representative for that company is gonna to have to draft a letter basically saying that you are an employee of the company. It's going to have to have your job description on there. It's going to have to have your monthly salary on there. And it's also going to have to have your work modality, which is basically like, how do you get your job done? So Panama more or less wants to know that you are doing this job remotely. Um, and so all of that would be reflected in that letter. If you are self-employed, Panama wants to know that your business exists outside of Panama. So if you have a corporation, you basically get your papers to show when you know, when you got incorporated and where in the States or in Canada or your other country um, in which you live that that's located. Same thing if you have an LLC, you can show that documentation as well. If you are self-employed and don't have either of these things, then I highly recommend you go down to your local courthouse, your county courthouse and get papers on file um, for a DBA doing business as. So you could be Mary Stewart doing business as you know, Mary's Bakery or something like that. Um, as long as you can show you have a business basically under that name, you're doing business under that name. So that's documentation you can get to show that you have a business. Or if you have an online store with Etsy or Amazon, you can get something like a W-2 to show proof of the company because that'll have address, um, the address of the company in the States or Canada. So you would need that information as well. You wanna also need this part of an affidavit if you're self-employed to show what is the nature of your business, what are the nature of your clients, what is some of your past revenue and future projected revenues. So these are all things that Panama um, wants to see in order for you to uh, get this visa. So the process overall takes about 30 days, it may be longer if they request more documentation. So one advantage to this visa with it being nine months and it being renewable is that if you're not sure if Panama is the place for you, if you don't want to make the investment of getting the um, Friendly Nations visa under the new terms, which are more expensive than in the past, if you're not retired yet or not eligible for the Pensionado visa, if you can't yet show you have $1,000 a month uh, coming in for life, maybe you need to bridge to that. One thing you can do is you can come in under your tourist visa. If you're from the U.S. and Canada, you can stay in Panama for up to 180 days. Um, so what you can do is you can make, plan your move. You can come on down on your tourist visa. You can still sign a long-term lease. You can stay here for you know five months, five and a half months, depending on how far you want to push it. You can go back to your home country. You can then start to get all of this paperwork together. You can um, get your FBI report, get everything apostle, get all of these other documents that we just discussed. Um, together. It may take a month or so. You can come on back down to Panama, come back in on your tourist visa again, which is still good for another six months. You can sit on this paperwork for a little while because again, the time to get the visa completed is only 30 days, maybe a little longer if Panama asks for more documentation. But you say you have six months from the time any of these documents were issued in order to use them with Panama Immigration. So say like your police report, um, you have six months to use that. Not counting the time that it took you to get it apostled or approved through the consulate. So it's when it was issued to you. So the clock starts ticking on that. So I guess what I'm saying is you can come down, you can live here a few more months, three, four months or whatever, and then start the process with your immigration lawyer. Hopefully then you'll get approved before that six months expires. Then you'll be in under your digital nomad visa for nine months. 
which you can again renew after another nine months. Um, and at that time, of course, you would have to leave unless they make some changes to the program at that time. Who knows? Maybe they extend it. Uh, maybe they increase the time. Maybe they make it renewable a third time. So um, we don't know. But even then, you can still go back to your home country again for a couple of weeks or something and come back in again under your tourist visa for 180 days. If you're not from the U.S. or Canada, you can employ the same strategy. Most other countries uh, are 90 days in Panama under those passports. But for the U.S. and Canada specifically, you have 180 days. So if you add that all up, that's basically three years of time right there that you, know, you have to figure something out in terms of do you want to apply for the permanent visa in Panama or do you want to go somewhere else? As I mentioned before, all these other countries also have digital nomad visas. You can always go somewhere else and then come back um, and just experience life living in some of these other countries. So um, with that, hope you all enjoyed the video. Please do like, subscribe, and comment below. And we'll see you all on the next one.